Chapter 7 Astrid knew something was wrong with the transporter after she stepped out of the closet of her house on Dargo Island. It had taken longer to get from her father's cloud to the house, so long, in fact, that she thought she was stuck. She'd stood in the windy, bright world between worlds long enough to think, which was a first. She'd even grown afraid that she would be trapped forever. As she walked to the living room, she decided not to use the transporter until her father was well again. If he got well again, that was. Though she'd only known him for a year, she realized she loved him. She loved Josh as well, and didn't blame him for what he was doing to Nauki. It was night, and Astrid wondered where the day had gone. It had been day when she found Josh in the large cloud. She felt like she'd been away for days rather than hours. Mom? she called, but the house seemed empty. She called the palace from the wall phone but didn't get an answer, so she jumped on her Bethel, named Pace, and rode up there. She found her mom in the palace courtyard, holding little Maximus. Mom was staring at something in the sky. Astrid hopped off of Pace and joined her. What's wrong? she asked. Mom looked at her with a distant expression on her face. See that light in the sky? Astrid looked. What is that? The light was small, but not too far away. It must have been hovering over the large waterfall that separated Dargo Island from the rest of the world. I think it's a helicopter, Mom said. A helicopter? Astrid remembered seeing one during one of her trips to Dad's realm. She'd also seen a few airplanes, machines that gave regular people the ability to fly. What a concept. Has there ever been a helicopter this close before? Never. Even if one did come this way, it wouldn't see us. At least, that's the way it used to be. I can't help but feel that helicopter can sense us, though. That's impossible, Astrid said nervously. The light did seem to hover, though. Maybe the pilot's being driven back by the magic that hides us. Mom looked at her. Something happened while you were gone. A meteor crashed on the island. I think it was being tracked, and since it landed on an island that can't be seen, the outside world is curious as to what happened to it. A meteor? Was anyone hurt? Not that we know of. She looked past her daughter to a group of Bethel riders approaching the palace gate. It was Anila and a few soldiers. Astrid, Anila said as she got off her Bethel. Welcome back. You missed all the action. Mom just told me. Look. She pointed to the helicopter. Anila gasped. Another meteor? No. Something worse, the outside world, Mom said. We just discovered the meteor crashed into the core of the island. It injured the heart of the island. It's a living spirit. Astrid tried to process this. The island spirit? Yes, it's an intelligent being named Rapatha. I spoke with her. Now that she's injured... Her ability to hide us may be dwindling. What will happen if she isn't healed? Astrid asked, and then her question was answered a second later. The ground quaked so violently that everyone was nearly knocked off their feet. Mom barely managed to hold on to Maximus. He started to cry, and Anila took him into her arms. I don't think we can afford to let Rapatha die, Anila said. If she does, the whole island may break apart, and then we all die. A soldier ran up to them. Queen Anila, Andor has escaped from his cell. She spun around, her eyes wide. How? His cell broke apart during the first quake. He escaped and killed Malix. Astrid remembered the handsome young guard. How could he be dead? He may still be in the palace, Anila said. 
I want you and a team of soldiers to search every room. She looked about nervously. I think it best to go into hiding until he is found. I left two soldiers to guard Rapatha until I return. She looked at the helicopter again, which turned around and headed back to the mainland. Goddess, help us. We are facing more threats than ever before. She looked around for a moment before whispering, Play along with what I'm about to say. Shay was confused at first, but she decided to do as asked. Anila's next words were noticeably louder, and they carried throughout the courtyard. Andor watched the man from an alley in Dargo Plaza, between a bookstore and a salon. He was a mile from the palace, and he saw the queen and a few soldiers trot away on Bethel's. The man he watched was an old friend. Andor had tried getting this man to go along with him during his plan to overthrow Anila and release Dargo from his prison so that he could undo the plague ravaging the island. The friend, Marquesa, had backed out at the last minute. Marquesa walked into a bar across from the bookstore. Andor knew the man owned it and always locked up at this time. He made his way toward the bar and slipped around to the back where he also knew a broken door awaited him. Marquesa was slow to fix things. Andor slipped into the bar from the kitchen, grabbed a knife, and walked up to Marquesa. The chubby bar owner's jaw dropped when he saw Andor. What are you doing here? Andor smiled through his paint-smeared face. I've come to thank you for what you did to me. I didn't do nothing, Andor. I had nothing to do with your arrest. But you did abandon me when I needed you the most, when all of our friends and family were dying around us. You broke the law and released the man who created the plague in the first place. Your loyalty lay in the wrong person, Andor. You should have trusted Anila. She pulled through in the end. Andor chuckled as he approached his friend. And in the end, so will I. He lunged at Marquesa and stabbed him in the heart. For my son, he whispered. The blinds had been pulled on the windows, so no one saw Andor kill the man. He pulled the knife from the man's chest, wiped off the blood with the bar owner's shirt, and then turned to leave the same way he came in. Only, when he got outside, he saw something he didn't expect to see. A little boy stood in the alley next to the bookstore, the same alley Andor had watched from only moments ago. Son? The man called quietly. He was looking at his dead son.